Hello, Brother Monroe here. Welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts and to the Japanese campaign, where we have the Akagi taking on this brand new ship, the Ranger. Interesting vessel. Uh, has the potential to be quite good. We've got 32 knot top speed and eight 17 inch guns in two quad turrets. Now, um, in the mod, I have made quad turrets a little bit better because the AI loves to use them. Um, <laughs> and uh, all I did was uh, improve the two repeatable techs you get for the quad guns to basically, they're not quite as good as triples or duels, but um, they are, they're not a million miles away. Uh, do, 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 follow, avoid, avoid, off. Save on the torps, if you please. Uh, yeah, so the uh, handicap, the AI, sometimes would give itself by using um, quad guns has been removed. Obviously, it means uh, players can use quad guns. Uh, as well, especially if you wait. Uh, so early quad guns are a bit rubbish, but they get um, better faster. Ooh, I don't like that. Hey, we spotted it. Okay. Um. Ah, oh, that was nearly a really cool design. Uh, just from the layout. So this is actually really not bad at all. Um, I don't see the reason to put either turret on our barbette. But AX quad is perfectly legitimate. Um, I'm not sure I would include just a single quad secondary like this. There's no... You've got plenty of mounting points here for 5 inch guns. Which would probably do the job just fine. What kind of gun is that? 7.7. .7. And this funnel, you could have moved it up on here. Pushed this together. Brought the whole design together a bit. But it's not too bad, actually. Cargo turning fire. Oh, she's going for the heavy cruisers. Understandably, but I don't want them uh, right behind the Kagi in that case. Ow. No. Haven't scored a single hit yet. Oh, no, no, there we go. No, don't like it. Stop it. Yeah, deck pin. Is definitely a weak spot for us. Americans seem very well optimized for plunging fire. Look at that difference in accuracy, though. Ex Long range on those big guns. Really helping them. That's why I'm glad I'm building some 16 inch armed battle cruisers. Stop it. Rain? Yeah. Range. 
43. I mean, I have no idea what their range is, but I dislike it immensely. Yeah, target switch, you bastard. Oh, you're going to murder the transports. That's not brilliant. But, uh, yeah, definite loss here. Uh, for everyone saying, oh, game's too easy. Yeah. Uh, when the AI actually pulls out designs that aren't appalling... Becomes much more difficult. Right, let's have a proper look at you. Oh, it is well armoured. Chupan a Pickrick. Ah, yeah, that will give you a very high arc, super heavy shells. Yeah, this is almost precisely designed to hit at very, very long ranges. What a nasty proposition. Hmm. Really, I want to put all my capital ships in for refits. <laughs> oh, I just don't have the uh, capacity to do it at the moment. But yeah, that is a, a nasty proposition to deal with. Look at that range as well. 63 kilometer range on their guns for AP shells. And look at that deck pin as well. You can, can't even see the bottom of the chart, but it's going past 16 inch um, beyond about 30,000 meters. Very, very high, and they can actually hit at that range, which is not brilliant. So I'm going to lose a bunch of transports. Okay, I'll see you on the post battle results screen. All right, there we go. Uh, they obliterated the convoy as I expected. But yeah, that. Very high accuracy at that extreme range. That's going to be difficult for us to handle. Right, back to the map. Right, welcome back. Uh, we also have this. The Satsuma has found the Chippewaya. Um, now, one-on-one? -on -one? Uh, hmm. We should be able to pull this out, but I reckon this is... This is effectively going to be a dead heat. In my mind, like 1v... <laughs> and this is exactly what I want, by the way. Um, because uh, normally when you're playing Dreadnoughts, it's like, oh, yeah, oh, they've sent another battleship to its doom. But in this version, 1v1, you're thinking... Well, unless it's a truly appalling design, you do tend to think that well, actually, this is a bit nip and tuck. I wonder who's going to come out on top. Um, it comes down to other factors, like... Well, okay, luck. <laughs> Which is not the best. But also, you know... Crew. Positioning. Command. Things like that. See, now... Unlike when the ships have gone up against... Um, the 14 inch arm ships we have the range and we get the first hit and you're switching target that could be an issue for me done it again I would love them to fix target switching because it is Incredibly annoying. This one does have slightly chunkier deck armor. We've got a one and a half inch innermost layer. Uh, I am thinking. Ow! I am thinking about doing a video on how the layers do actually work, but short version um, is that. Oh, missed. The innermost layer basically is a, an eighth of what it actually does. So if you've got a one inch inner layer, it's an eight inch 
deck. Alright, it's so those heavy shells. They really hurt. We're going to have to uh, pull back. I'd rather not lose to Satsuma. Yeah. That's what I was saying. And if we hadn't have target switched and then had target locks, we could have had this. Which is kind of frustrating. Target lock and um, target switching combined is pretty annoying. Because they don't have the target switching problem because it's just me. I mean, okay, they might be tempted by the transport. What's the range target? 40. Almost out of their range. Yeah, disappointing. Satsumas as well. I did suspect they needed a a look. Oh, we got a couple of hits there. And it looks like they're withdrawing, so... Oh! Ho, ho! That changes things. What was I saying about luck? Are they totally out of ammunition? on their big gun. I think they are. That means, Setsuma, you can turn around and finish them off. Okay, apart from that one shell. Sometimes these can still have shells remaining. Save your ammo. Nice. Satsuma pulling out an absolute clutch <laughs> flash fire out of nowhere. Got it. Point one dead. Ho ho. Well now. Fascinating. <laughs> what a battle. That Totally was like, that went backwards and forwards in terms of who I think was going to come out on top. That's fantastic. That is a really solid battle. I, I mean, this four heavy cruiser never stood a chance, but... The the duel of the, between the Chippeway and the Satsuma. My goodness me. Yes. That's the stuff we want. Right. I'm going to head back to the map. And um, I'm not going to do some of the other battles because they're not very interesting. Um, and uh, we're going to end the turn, basically. Okay. It's a couple of turns later. Um, they're trying to do a port strike on Saigon with the Pennsylvania. Now, this is a different ship. This is a refitted ship. The West Virginia. Three twin 16.1-inch guns. Also very slow. 
Um, but uh, I don't have any serious ships here, so... <laughs> I want to have a look at it, because uh, I didn't realise they had uh, multiple different types. That's very interesting. Oh, we're starting really far away? Okay, um, never mind. Bye! <laughs> uh, sorry, I know that's not very interesting, but I'm running away. I will see you back on the map. Okay, uh, it happened again. I wasn't able to get away this time. Um... Started a lot closer. This is the ship I was talking about. This West Virginia class. Um, they got a bunch of them. So I don't know if this represents a new design. Or a significant proportion of their fleet. Um, but yeah. Um, I was going to try and retreat. But that now seems unlikely. As I'll be well inside their range. Probably for quite some time. Yeah, we're only 30 kilometers or something. I'm probably going to lose all three cruisers here. Ow. No idea what the range is on those American ships, but it's probably way over here somewhere. Jesus, 58 kilometers. Suki's doing a surprisingly good job resisting fire. How many hits has she taken? 60? 60 hits. 65 hits from 16-inch guns. That's actually quite impressive. Okay, they're firing the HE shells, but she might have given the Navy here the chance to escape. You can bring up their range circles. I saw it briefly. I can't see him anymore, but um, I think we're out of I think I think we're out of range. Did I? If I only lost the light cruiser, <laughs> Atsugi, you absolute unit. Doesn't even have good layers or anything. If they'd switched up and put like a couple of AP shells in that mix, I would have been done for. End battle. Bye. Woo. <laughs> okay. Jesus. But yeah, these things. Are they all refitted? Yeah. Interesting. Uh, not not terrible looking. Obviously, I didn't get a, a look at their armor or anything like that. But, okay. Oh, come on. Had like a, a seven, over 70% chance to take Cambodia. That is incredibly annoying. Um... Just try again. Uh, we're about to take a Nam. <sighs> uh, tell you what, I'm going to wait a turn and go into the peace treaty. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, yeah, I know there's battles going on, but um, I don't, I don't want to do them. Uh, let's see if that works. Oh, um, I didn't even have to press the button. Uh, apparently, that, that was not me. That is just peace getting declared. Uh, I can't even ask for Cambodia. Fuck's sake. Um, well, I guess the most... I mean, we want Ivory Coast back. <laughs> this is the other thing they took from us. That's a bloody white piece, more or less. Ugh. That is incredibly irritating. Right. However, 
it gives us no and we did get we did get an app okay good so that that effectively is a white piece yeah we did take a couple did we take a couple of islands off them i'm not even sure anyway um we need to rearm because this is definitely going to be a problem in the future so what i'm going to do is i'm going to try and get hmm I, I'm probably going to order all of the 16 and 18 inch ships back to Sasebo. Also have the Akamas here. Um, uh, yeah, all of you. Yeah, all of you. Go back. Um, we also have here. This is the 14 inch fleet. Yeah, they are going to live in Singapore. The Satsuma is repairing in Singapore at the moment. And this lot... Yeah, this is the 16-inch fleet. The 16-inch fleet I'm going to move to... Um, uh, Hangzhou. And we're gonna get them. We're gonna we're gonna do a round of refits on the capital ships. We are, of course, uh, building, which is absolutely fine. Um, and we've got the new. Oh, hold on, we've got the new 16-inch battle cruisers on the way as well. So all good. Where did the 14-inch battle cruisers end up? They're over here somewhere, aren't they? They are. Uh, we should really pick up the two Akagis and put them all in the same place. Um, Hollandia could be an interesting base for them. Although, it would make more sense to keep them at home. Let's put them into Yokosuka. Okay, I'm going to do some tidying up. And then, once I've got all the ships uh, where I want them, I will start doing some refits. Alright, uh, first up, I'm going to refit the Yamatos. Now, this is not going to be particularly interesting, because if you saw the Yamato reborn... Uh, class, you probably know what I'm going to do here. So, um, the, the they're great ships. The problem we had facing the Americans was long range. We were taking serious hits on the deck. So I want this to be at least three inches, that third inner deck, because a three inch third inner deck gives us an effect effective inner layer of 24 inch which should be enough to protect our vitals <laughs> at least um, from plunging fire now to do that I'm just going to set uh, this to be like 5 all the way yeah and then move this down one tick so this gives me the thick the minimum thickness required on the first and second inner decks to get a three inch inner deck. And I'm going to do the same on the belt so that we have a very, very thick inner belt as well. Uh, the problem really is the top, top armor. So we are vulnerable to a shell coming in and landing directly on top of the turret and taking it out but i think that i mean how yeah we can only get 12.6 inch on the top top of the turret anyway um we could try boosting all of this um to make these ships really well protected um but the problem then 
becomes how do we get the weight because yeah gas turbines makes it worse so I don't think we can do that I don't think there's any any um, anything we can do in terms of sorting this out that is the armor scheme I would like to run though hmm seven percent is a lot yeah I don't think I can get away with the upgrade to the turrets as well much though I'd like to yeah it puts me back on a hundred percent uh I only need to lose a hundred tons uh which we can probably pull off uh, can we do it just by shortening those three inch guns? Well, no, uh, two inch guns, sorry. We could actually start removing the two inch guns. They don't really add anything, particularly. Uh, so we could remove this row of two inch guns. Um, that gets me to within seven tons. I'll well, go down one tick on the inner belt. Uh, there we go. So that gives us, I think, a, a better, more resistant to plunging fire, hardier Yamato. So I'm going to save that one, and then I'm going to move on to the Satsumas. Okay, here we are with the Satsumas. Uh, I can get them oil three, uh, which will help a little bit with the weight. I think everything else is up to snuff. We can get rid of the RDF, we don't need that anymore. Uh, duh, 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 duh. Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, the other thing we could consider doing with these 16 inch guns is giving them uh, super heavy shells just to help with the punch it does however make their flash fire chance higher than zero uh, and I kind of like the no chance that your ship is going to explode on you I, I would prefer that so um, what we do need to do with them though is we need to address their deck protection so we're going to up that to eight i'm also going to up their four and a half belts to six uh then we are going to do the same trick of just giving them a 4.7 inch first layer and then maxing out two inner layers so we get a three inch inner layer meaning that with that in a belt, uh, we should be okay down to about 15,000 meters, and the inner deck should render us proof to our own guns at any range, which is very nice. Um, the only problem now is I kind of want to up the turret tops, so up them to nine inch. Um, yeah, I think the main issue would be for this ship, uh, that her turret's getting knocked out at range, but then she should be able to withdraw um, safely if that does happen. So I think that should make them a lot, a lot more survivable. Good. Yes. Okay. Uh, next, I'm going to have a look at the... Hmm... I mean, that's basically our two frontline ships, the Satsumas and the Yamatos, and the Yamato Reborns, but you know what I mean. Um, I think the Ontakis, the new 16-inch battlecruisers, will effectively replace our 14-inch battlecruiser fleet. Um, hmm... Trying to think what else we desperately need. Because the 14-inch the battle cruisers are going to kind of be in a weird spot. 
Do you know what? I, I will have a look at the Akagis. Why not? Okay, here we are with the Akagis. Uh, again, there doesn't seem to be anything... I, oh, I could dump the RDF. Uh, there doesn't really seem to be much uh, I can do uh, in terms of uh, layout and things. Um, really, what we're wanting to do is we're wanting to bump up their protection again. So, 8 and 6. Just give them a little bit more general resistance. Uh, it'd be nice to get this up to at least two. Uh, there we go. So 3.1, 2.5, and 2. So uh, this is a, effectively a 16-inch inner belt and deck, um, which, which is which is a sizable upgrade. Um, can we actually get a 16-inch main belt itself? Could, could we up the no the turrets are too difficult but we could we can we can just you know bolt on just a little bit more armor to make these things a little bit more survivable um it's a nice design actually i quite like them but yeah i think that will help and yeah hopefully I mean that at long range they're able to resist fire a little bit better. Okay, next up, I wanted to refit the Kuma class, which is the only light cruiser class that we have that has never had a refit, and it's also the one that's been sitting without an auxiliary engine this whole time. Uh, they can also get a modern 2 armor upgrade. Um, I think everything else... Uh, no, they've got Gen 3 radar to get. Um... Which is very nice. Can we can we up there? We could up their armor a little bit, but I think to be honest, just a, just a, a quick maximum bolt kits though. That's mm, actually I'd rather have the range bump. Can I get both? Nope. Double range bump because of the diesels. Yeah, double range bump. Give them. This is just for convoy protection, really. Um, these Kumas are very small. Uh, light cruisers um, that we've been selling for export primarily but I kind of don't want to do export orders anymore I need all of my ship capacity for a plan that I have and I'm going to do the same thing with our um, current unupgraded destroyer which I'll load up in a second right here we have the Arashiros which I've put on to modern 2 and radar 3 um, again, we can get them a nice little range bump and some extra bolt kits. Yeah, some extra bolt kits. Uh, nothing much. So, that is uh, all the refits I want to do. I'm going to wait a little bit of time and then I want to get out a new destroyer, light and heavy cruiser class. Uh, in fact, I could probably just do that now. We're over our port capacity. I might as well just th throw everything at the wall. Um, and I think I'm going to order some more Akumas as well, because when all of that is g getting almost done, because, yeah, I think we just need millions of tons of of ships, like big, big old doom stacks. All right, uh, time for a new destroyer. I'm going for the modern destroyer three. It actually has, well, arguably slightly better stats than the experimental destroyer. It also has the same maximum weight, but it has a lower minimum weight. Uh, no, it doesn't. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. <laughs> so there's a bit of more range on the design. Um, now, our previous destroyer, which I should have looked at before this confusing list, where my eyes go funny because I have so many classes of ship. Anyway, let's just look over here. Uh, 2,200 tons. Come on, I literally just refitted one. Should it not be down here somewhere? Fuck's sake. Um, can't see it. I can't see anything in this list. It should be a destroyer with like 1951 after it. 
Uh, if you can see that, you're doing better than me. And I began with an A. <laughs> That's all I'm looking for. DD, not this one. Uh, no, nope, can't see it. Oh, it's right there. <laughs> it's because it's grayed out. I thought that was the one I was looking at. Uh, so those are 3,000 tons. So let's go for 3,500 tons. Let's try and get them nice and fast, actually, at 38 knots. Um, yes, right. Main tower. I'm going to go for this one, actually. Um... Where's the four? <laughs> Mind you, these are the same the same weight. And this one is very, very, very slightly better. So we don't care about money at the moment, but we do care about um, we do care about uh, displacement, technically. Uh, Probably go for the large barbet tower on this one. Mm -hmm. Nine five inch guns and uh Go for three long lance launches. That would be that would be quite a lot of um, quite a lot <laughs> of torpedo. Yeah, three of them is going to be tricky. Really, three of them is going to be tricky to pull off, but might be able to. Uh, what's my flash fire chance on this thing, actually? Zero, eh? Put a couple of two inch guns on as well. What is it with, uh, no, that's not what I want. Point eight, point four, I, point, I can live with a point eight. It's less than a one percent, it's only a destroyer. Let's put super heavy shells on this bad boy. Um. Okay. Now, I reckon diesel is going to be the lightest, but it might not be. That's 108. Oh, no gas turbines, of course, because we are a fast ship. So gas turbines, now that they've been uh, boosted, are now the better choice. Good, that is perfect. That's exactly what I wanted them to be able to do. Um... They're also cheaper <laughs> um, because, yeah, they're optimized for trying to get a ship up to 38 knots. Uh, right, where can I save weight? Right, this is just a, a fanciness, that little bit. Let's go for the smaller one. Um, this is primarily torpedo oriented. We could go down to twin guns, potentially, or I could drop a torpedo launcher. Um, I think I'm going to drop a torpedo launcher because those aren't very, I think that's going to be the better choice overall. Um, and that gives me 5%, which 
Which means we could maybe try and tack some armor onto this thing. Um, which might seem weird. I'm assuming I can only fit one inch yet. But, you know, one inch of armor isn't a lot. But it's something. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And if you look at the pen on a base fused five inch gun, uh, I'd like these to be five inch forties though. Might push us over weight. Nope. Two inch forties. Lovely. But if you look at say, well, you even a, a two inch gun here, right? This is with a capitalistic two super heavy shell, 0.8 inches of belt pen, which means it won't go through the, uh, the armor on our destroyer so an inch might actually be useful keep out uh he shells um just in general uh could we go s i know this sounds very weird but um, i might just go increased where does it tell me how many shells I get? I don't actually know. Hmm. I might just go increased HE on these. So they're going to carry a slightly more AP shells than other destroyers. Uh, I think those super heavy... AP shells will be useful against other destroyers that have armor. We should be able to go through their armor at 7,000 meters or so uh, with an AP shell. So, yeah, let's carry slightly more AP shells. They're not that expensive either. In fact, cheaper than the Arashiro refits. Um, lovely. Nice little cheap protective uh, destroyer for us to you know, spam out, basically. Lovely. Right, we also need a light cruiser. All right, next up, I'm thinking an 11,000 ton uh, scout cruiser uh, going 36 knots. Um, our light cruisers have done a lot of good work. Uh, I'm not even sure which one this would be closest to because it's a while since I... I built them probably the Neodos. Um, uh, no, those are the uh, those are these ones. Modern, Modern Light Cruiser Two, be the Abakumas, which I actually really really like, um, which are ten thousand tons. So these are slightly going to be slightly larger. I mean, I could make them larger still if I played with the sliders, I suppose. Nice big funnel. And yeah, mm, this one, I think. Mind you, that one's a fair bit lighter, and it doesn't have that much of a drop off in accuracy. Oh, I might go with this one. No, it's the wrong shape. Go with this one. Shave a, shave a few tons off. Um, yeah, so we're really rebuilding a slightly larger Abakuma. How much did they come out at? Four hundred and fifty-eight million each. But yeah, definitely keeping the good old six-inch forty caliber. That proved very effective. Um... Well, there is a way that we could make this interesting. Because <laughs> this, technically... Oh, come on. Technically, this is fine. Perfectly built for a, a chase. We have <laughs> nine guns firing forward. 
and then we can have uh, it's probably this one couple of guns on the back for a I would say pretty scary amount of firepower I think that is quite a lot no I don't want any of those terrible terrible two inch guns uh, it would be nice to have a torpedo launcher uh, just to have the option Quintuples don't fit, uh, but a quad, quad fits. So just a quad stack of torps on either side. Nice. I think that'll be well, well suited to the kind of tasks that I have in mind. Um, radar and sonar, of course. Uh, let's get all the all of this stuff done. Now, what is my explodey chance? That's the next question. Zero. Point four. So we're going to go super heavy, six inch. Um, to give these guys just that little bit of extra, extra punch. Uh, yeah, 10,000 meters, two and a half, and 0 0.3, 2 0.7, 0 0.4. Yeah, it's just a little bit of extra punch, and it's a little bit of extra damage. Now, wait, if we go gas turbines, we're at 68, and diesels, we're at 70. Let's go gas turbines then. It is a relatively fast ship at 36 knots. So yeah, let's go gas turbines. I also have capacity remaining to push the speed, and I've not even done armor or anything yet. Um... Uh, what's the most armor I can put on the ship? 5.8. Cool. Okay, let's just go for the max. Uh, I'd say a 1.5 for an off belt, which should be fine to keep out. HE rounds. Uh, deck armor. Let's go 3. And 1.5, 1.5. One point five on the superstructure, six on the conning tower, and then six, three, three, and then just max out the layers. Uh, one point nine inch in a belt gives us uh, effectively a fifteen inch backup layer which is pretty nice and 1.2 times 8 is 9.6 um so 9.6 deck ec, deck um extra backup layer should mean <laughs> that these 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 things are basically here to stop ap rounds and then all, all the rest is mainly focused about keeping out high explosive so try and block high explosive and AP rounds, try and get them down to a partial pin. Uh, given that we have so much extra stuff, let's go maximum bulkheads, spacious, max range. And we still have all of that to go. Can we get a diesel electric auxiliary system? Yes, we can. Damn. So we've got a hog... Combined uh, this would be a C uh, combined so co 
gas. Uh, diesel electric system, which is a very, a very modern setup. Someone who knows what all those acronyms are can tell me what, what this setup is. So we've got primary gas turbines, we have diesel engines, and we have electrical batteries and motors that can uh, power the engines as well. So we have a lot of redundancy, and now we can push speed. Can we go to 38? Yes, we can. 39? Yes, we can. 40? Ho, oh, ho, 41? No. 40 knots it is. <laughs> Damn, and it's cheaper. Yes, I like gas turbines. Um, we're not getting quite as much range as the diesel-engined ships will, but we're getting speed. <laughs> getting speed. We've got torps. We've got an extra gun. Yes, this will be very useful indeed. I I like it. Yes, please. Okay, next up, I think I'm actually going to go for the heavy scout cruiser again. I love this hull so much. Look at that, max optimal speed. And now we have the capability of getting up to it. So we could build something that could maybe do... Maybe we could get up to 41 knots. I'd be happy with... In fact, I'll be happy with 40. Let's go. Let's build around 40 so that the Kaya has a heavy cousin to go with it. Now, uh, tower-wise... Uh, hmm... I think this one, uh, I think this two, like, well, okay, it's not 200, 100 tons. Mm, see, this is two base accuracy that you're dropping. Although these two are very similar. But anyway, I'm going to go with this one. Not the top end tower, but you know, slightly, slightly under. Obviously, I'm going to go with a mini tower, not these crane towers, and a big old funnel. Beautiful. Now, guns. I did say I had a plan. <laughs> because we're going to use 11.9s. I don't normally use 11 point or any 0.9 inch gun. Um, but effectively what I really want to use is a 12 inch gun. But no, we're going to use pretend 12 inch guns. Officially, they will in fact be 12 inch guns. Specifically, 12-inch, 55-caliber guns. Um, but uh, according to the game, they'll be 11.9-inch, which is a thing. Okay. Um, medium bar bit. That look. Yeah, that looks about right. So these are going to be our very fast, very heavy cruisers that are actually in the heavy cruiser category, not in the battle cruiser character category. That is my idea. However, whether I can actually make this work, I have no idea. Um, we're going to go oil three, of course. We're going to go gas turbines, because that seems to work surprisingly well. Uh, see, engine efficiency isn't high enough to do the 40 knots. That's such a shame. I mean, I could actually add an extra funnel. That's going to add a huge amount of weight. Uh, let's try 38. Nope, 37? 37. Okay, so we'll drop the speed just a touch. Still, we'll still make it our fastest heavy cruiser by a fair margin, I think. Um, a little worried about weight though got a lot of protective systems to add in gun systems all that stuff and uh, flash flash answer is zero 1.3 
Uh, it could go super heavy shells. But I'm 5% overweight and I haven't added any armor. So I think I'm going to piss everybody off <laughs> and go back to the good old 9 inch gun that has been the mainstay of our heavy cruiser fleet for ages. Uh, and we are going to make these 55s. I think 55 is probably the longest you can push a gun, uh, in, it's certainly in the mod, modded version, without um, encountering problems, should we put it that way? We're gonna, actually, I'm going to keep you around for just a little bit so that we can armor ourselves. So, against our actual guns... Uh, what are we talking about here? Like 12, 12 inch main belt, something like that. Can pull that off? No, only 10. 10's fine. And the main deck, uh, 5. And let's go 5, 5, 5, 2.5, 5. We'll go quite heavy on the armor. 12, uh, max armor these turrets. And then max the layers. Oh, 3.2 is excessive. That's the same as <laughs> like a battleship. Um, but we can max the, the deck. And then if we dump the gun on the back, 2% overweight. Okay. Could we swap two diesels? Nope. That makes things worse. Okay, could we drop an order speed to 36? Yes, we could. That keeps it pretty much on par with... Where's the most recent one? The Asimus. Um Actually, no, the Asimus are slower. Uh, when's... So this would be more like the... Washibas. Um, with... Oh, it's cheaper. Same same displacement. It's basically the same ship, isn't it? <laughs> Except that one had torpedoes. But we are coming in under them. And we have more protection. Significantly more protection, I would say. We can probably tone down the inner, inner belts a little bit to get us underweight. Because even if we turn it down to two, actually let's make it one point nine, same as the same as the deck. I quite like doing that. Um, that gives us quite quite a lot of protection. Uh, let's just drop the four and a half deck as well. Actually, um, there we go. That's a bit more reasonable because we still got quite a lot of protection here. I mean, those 1.9 inch inner layers are going to turn into 15.2 inch um, effectively, letting us keep our own guns out pretty effectively, even at point blank range, which is kind of what you want. Um, but no torpedoes on these. These are just going to be pure thoroughbred heavy cruisers just for sinking enemy heavy cruisers primarily because we found that there was a lot of that type of combat going on uh could we get no underwaters no but we could we could hmm now nah, go away immediately i prefer that a kind of washiba class but re retooled basically to be tougher and, of course, we are packing the super heavy 9-inch guns, not just standards. Maybe helping us out with pen and punch. Okay. Well, that's that's been a lot of uh, reconstruction and stuff. I, uh, well, we'll end the episode here. Mm, well, no, I shouldn't because I need to show you all the ships that I'm going to be building. So, yeah, I'll save this and I'll see you on the fleet screen. Okay. So, here is the new building program. There are five more Akuma class <laughs> Akumas 
under construction. I ordered 30 heavy cruisers, 30 light cruisers, and 30 destroyers to help us replace our losses and go a little bit beyond that. Um, we obviously have the odd tuckies under construction. I've got currently five, but I am going to add a bunch more because I think they're a decent design. So we're going to add another five. Um, and this will mean that the Ontakis and the Akumas will be our main fleets, um, basically. <laughs> we're going to have a fast fleet and a slow fleet. And then all the other ships... Oh, well, no, not all the other ships. Then we're going to have the Gamotos and the Satsumas forming a kind of reserve fleet, basically. And the 14-inch ships, I think we will form up into even more of a reserve fleet, if that makes sense. Um, they're going to be based out of Singapore, I reckon. Uh, it is Singapore that I've put them, isn't it? Yeah. So down here in Singapore, this is going to be the reserve fleet. Well, uh, reserve slash, you know, convoy protection fleet. Uh, down here, we're going to have the 16-inch fleet uh, of and uh, and the Yamatos when I when they're ready, uh, when they're out of refit, I'll move them over. We'll have the Akumas, and then we're going to have the Ontakis for fast attack. Um, there's probably going to be a bit of a skip between now and the next episode. Um, but uh, this is the state of the world in, what are we, November 1951, end of 1951. So, uh, we might be at war with Germany, the Soviet Union, Spain in the near future. Uh, fine, whatever. Um, I've decided to go all the way to 1965, by the way. Um, the United States has built so much stuff. Uh, and this is why I am responding. Uh, because I really, really need to up my... Just We just need more ships. We need more ships, more powerful ships. I'm also going to be selling those new designs to our allies. They shouldn't ask for any of the other ships. They can ask for Akumas, Ontakis, uh, Yamato Reborns, um, and then, but mainly I'm going to be selling them these three, the, the three I just built, um, as much as possible. Uh, the Germans, if we do end up with a war with them, do have something interesting to go and fight. Uh, the Italians quite like us, so I'm not going to worry about them too much. The Spanish have stuff for us to fight, which is cool. The British don't, but they should be able to rebuild. Uh, they're also at war with Italy at the moment. And the Soviets don't really have anything. So I'm not particularly interested in a war with them. Uh, Soviets are the minnows <laughs> in terms of economy. Um, we are second. Yeah, we're, we're the second largest economy in the world um, at 3 trillion. But yeah, the US at 34, that is going to be extremely difficult to deal with. But now that we know that they like that plunging fire long-range plunging fire strategy. We, I th I'm kind of hoping that the refits and the new ships will allow us to counter that a little bit. And we do technically have a larger fleet than they do already. Uh, if you're wondering, oh, you've gone a little bit over your uh, shipbuilding capacity there. Yes, I have. Um, but at a certain point, it doesn't matter. <laughs> because it only ever gets up to double your build time. So you might as well just throw in whatever you want. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, a bunch of the refits will be finished in two months and then four months, and that'll free up a little bit. Um, and then, yeah, we'll just, we've just got a massive building program going on, but, you know, it's just... I think easier to do that than uh, than to do anything else. Our monthly balance is actually reasonably sensible. 
now because I'm totally overspending. <laughs> but yeah, we basically need more shipyards capacity. We need more shipyard capacity. And I really wish you could build that out separately because that would be so helpful. Um, also, uh, the army is trying to take Tibet, which would be cool because that would shore up our board. Well, not apart from Nepal, I guess. But it would shore, shore up our border with the British. Um, future wars. If we get into a war with Germany, they really don't have anything outside of Europe. Uh, uh, no, it's a million tons. We're never taking that. I'm just looking for if they have any vulnerable provinces. We could potentially take Lithuania. Uh, taking Central Russia? Navally? Would probably be my go-to play. <laughs> Just park every single ship I have here. <laughs> and try and take Central Russia off the Germans. Because I don't think we're going to be a... Well, mind you, their army force is tiny. The army might be able to do it. But relying on the army... Pfft, not likely. Also, <laughs> the hilarity of having Japan with a Baltic fleet would amuse me. Um, yeah, that's probably the stupidest thing I could do, but it is funny. More seriously, we could probably take Lithuania, maybe Prussia, um, through naval invasions. They don't, I mean, they've got issues in Europe at the moment. Um <laughs> Who else doesn't like me? Spain. Spain, again, is nearly all European stuff. Uh, with really big port caps, meaning that basically all of this is impossible for us to navally invade. Um, Russia. Soviets. I mean, we can't navally invade Siberian Russia because there has no ports. We could maybe take Northern Russia, which would be funny. Um, yeah, we could, we could try and take Northern Russia. <laughs> or maybe Finland. Liberate Finland. Do some crazy nonsense. Um, but re really, the only province I actually want off them is Siberian Russia. So... Probably a better option would be to move a fleet into the Black Sea, one into the Baltic Sea, and one into the White Sea up here to uh, blockade them and just starve them out. Same with Germany, to be honest. Plant a uh, fleet here, here, and here, and just starve them out. Um, and the same with Spain. Fleet here, fleet here, fleet here. Starve them out. Um, but yeah... America or Britain? I want to have another slice. I hope so. They've got, I mean, you've got, what, just under 15, well, we're doing 1952, so 13 years remain. Oh, yes, I'm up for it. Let's see how it goes. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for some more Ultimate Airport Trinals. Bye for now.